Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel and to Pushy, our new automated pet wrench killer. Does it matter which way you hold a wrench, like the orientation of the wrench's jaws before you're about to reef on it? The answer is, of course, use a box end, you blockhead, or a socket, obviously, but when on the application you can't, or there's not enough clearance, and seemingly where all the questions and feedback from your coworkers start to come into play is on the old open end, people seem to have thoughts. I've always been told it matters, like most of us, but that may have come from what has long been a hard and fast rule about these tools. I've always called them crescent wrenches. Crescent may have made these popular, like a Ziploc situation. I think their technical name is knuckle fuckers, but anyways, these have one fixed jaw and one adjustable floating, I'm assuming, much less strong jaw. So first, we're going to test that principle. Is it true? Does it still apply to modern tools, which we sometimes see go way beyond our expectations? We bought two of each of a couple brands to test them both ways and then throw the book of standards Pushy's way to see what they can do. Then we see also, is there any change on a traditional open end wrench based on the direction it's oriented when turned? We got two snap-on 17 by 19 wrenches to find out, and even a classic model of the same snap-on wrench from days past for the winner to go up against simply because we're curious and Pushy's practically pining at the idea. So are these old wives' tales or best practices being passed down to the next generation? Let's dive into it. There's a reason on every wrench, there's a long jaw and a short jaw sort of end. You can either be rotating with the long jaw on top, here, pulling or pushing away from the long jaw or the short jaw on top, pulling or pushing towards the long jaw end. Those are the two camps. On this channel, we tried to test wrenches this way, the way you're encouraged to turn a crescent wrench simply because we get yelled at the least in the comment section turning it this way, even if we do test both orientations and show the median on screen. But there is a purpose to this asymmetrical design. Once there's an obstruction, like there always is, otherwise you'd probably be using the box end like everyone with a working melon, the offset head gives you twice as many angles of approach. So let's see, starting off with Crescent, I mean, how do you include Crescent wrenches without including Crescent? This is their 10 inch model, which we paid $15 for. And to see if it's a hard and fast rule and not a fluke, it's going to be going up against another 10 inch option, Baco here for $25. The Baco is made by Snap-on Industrial Brands in Spain. It looks a bit nicer, it feels a lot smoother, a little less slop in the jaws. And the Crescent is made by Apex Tool Group, who owns that brand, it's made in Vietnam. Up first is the Crescent with the recommended force supplied pushing away from the long fixed jaw. Each tool is snugged up against the hex as much as you can with your fingers, then wrenched on with the hex starting at the very bottom of the throat opening. We're starting with a 17 millimeter, just regular grade five class 8.8 type fastener for now to see what it slips at. But we'll be going up until they all break. The Crescent eventually gets up to, and we'll be using the ASME spec coming up. So we're using Newton meters here. So far, 207.9 Newton meters before its jaws let the hex turn enough to no longer climb in applied torque. Now, is that good? Let's use the Baco to compare and find out. Also on the same common vehicle hardware class of 17 millimeter hex. A lot of the setup here is just making sure the head of the wrench doesn't get pinched by the arm. Have to maintain a gap here, even if it is paper thickness, which we double check. But yeah, keep in mind all the torque is being measured up here at the hex. The Baco gets up to 155.6. Hmm. Didn't see that coming, I'll be honest. The jaws just sort of open a little, then slide a little. Not all that high a torque level, it would seem. Maybe the Baco prefers turning with the wrench in the other orientation, force being applied to the handle towards the longer fixed jaw, not away from it. Uh, no, 148.9, and yeah, it's broken. The thumb screw teeth skipped and wedged themselves into the moving jaws teeth. Does not like being turned this way, lower torque figure and it did die from it. Let's see how the Crescent gets on. This one took a wooden spacer to set up the jaws correctly, but yeah, just keep in mind, you could slowly back a truck into this wrench setup and it would still register torque just fine. Readings come from up here either way. 147.3, yeah, a lot less now than that 208 or so it made before. Didn't break, but you can see how the jaws were wedged apart. All of these are sort of just sliding so far on that hex. And all the wrenches turned that second way, made less, one of them a lot less, and the other one broke from it, whereas it didn't from the original way that even Crescent points out here on the wrench that you should be turning it. 
We're going to call this myth confirmed. Just seems like a best practice. Obviously, if you're pushing two wrenches together on some air fittings or something, you don't have the luxury of always choosing the correct orientation for both wrenches. But you do have an idea now what to aim for. And maybe you already did. That difference between them, though, I'd say we're not done exploring that. Both tools used in the correct orientation are still working, so let's address that. By opening up the good book of ASME standards, how engineers designing tools gauge the performance of these, there's an adjustable wrench section and a 10-inch class calls for an incredible 508 newton meters. That's 375 foot-pounds from a 10 inch adjustable wrench. I mean, I know ASME is typically more stringent than DIN metric European standards, but damn, I don't know how they expect that from these tools. They recommend a one and an eighth inch hex mandrel to test these with, so we'll be using that. And if they don't break here, we're gonna continue testing until they do. The Crescent hugging this big boy hex now, at least for this size of adjustable wrench, it does hold on way better than I expected. It's no longer just slipping, but starting to bend open those jaws and push the hex away from that lower throw area in the process, despite it originally starting down here in the throat, but is able to stack on 389.3 Newton meters or well, it's just 77% of the ASME spec. 287 foot-pounds is way north of where we figured these would reach. Let's see if these Spanish-made snap-on-owned Baco can improve. Maybe it doesn't prefer smaller sizes, which I often find to be the case with these knuckle removers. The Baco starts out well. It really doesn't want to bend or budge. That reluctance to open causes that hex, though, to wiggle its way up and increase leverage out on those working jaws. This comes to a head when there's nowhere else for those things to go, and boom. <laughs> Leaving us in a smoky, disappearing act. A hand tool making smoke, that's when you know you done messed up, locks up in the same way that the flipped over Baco did, but did so at 279.9 Newton meters, just 55% of that standard somehow. But miles above the 148.9 it broke at Lasco, really highlighting the truth of this wrench orientation thing for adjustable wrenches. But this one is at the end of the road here. The Crescent, it hasn't broken yet, so we'll put it on a 19 millimeter hardened hex die and turn it until it does, just to find that point and compare these tools in every way we can. It didn't break on one and an eighth hex, but on this hard as nails hex that allows for absolutely no slip, just jaw ruining torque, the wrench is able to make it up to 331.4 this time, less than the 389.3, so maybe it saw some damage. Its high mark remains at 77%. Before we settle this wrench side debate with traditional wrenches, we do have some scores to total. This isn't a best adjustable wrench episode, let us know if you'd like to see that, but we do have some scores based on how they did on each fastener size until broken. The peak torque reached on any size, they are awarded points based on how close they got to that sky high standard. Highest is best. I mean, even if they made 120 to 150%, this is just a comparison between tools. This is where one would normally get points for having thinner jaws, because that's a great luxury on these tools in our opinion. But they both measure 12 and a quarter to 10 mil or so tapered jaws. For now, this is nada. And hardness, that was strange. Not something we score, but crescent wrenches get consistently around 42 HRC. Pretty normal, nothing special. On the Baco wrench taken to over one inch hex, we get mid 30s. That's pretty soft. And on the other wrench, run sort of upside down, we get mid 40s, what you typically see, low 40s. That's not a good sign, 30s is too low. From what we've seen, it would appear Baco Spain has some work to do spot checking these tools and double checking treatment processes. Small sample size, I know, but that's almost more relevant if you're only buying two and you still see this. This all totals though, 195 and 141. Obviously, Crescent on top here, the tool namesake, though that's not usually how it goes these days in our experience. You don't expect to find that the best vice grips are necessarily from vice grip anymore. Maybe a topic for another day, but surprised to see the cheaper one clearly on top. This is a Snap-on VOM1719B, a 17 by 19 millimeter open end wrench. No flank drive plus, not a non-slip specialty jaw thing design, just a good old fashioned decent wrench. And this is another VOM1719B, we're going to be orienting the other way when it's turned. And this is a VOM 1719 without the B, a classic snap-on model. We're curious to see how it compares. You get the idea now. There's not a lot you need explained here, I hope. Let's dive in. 
Starting out with the 17 millimeter, we're working on like standard grade five class 8.8 equivalent hex hardware to see where it would slip first for you. The jaws are oriented in a way we're calling basically standard here, the way you're encouraged to swing a crescent wrench, force going away from the longer wrap around jaw. The wrench here makes it to 132 newton meters, no idea if that's good. Haven't tested a regular class bolt in 17 millimeter before, but we do have another wrench we can slide onto here, flipped the other way, force going towards the longer wraparound jaw. And this isn't something we expected to find, but the hex starts to, like the hex it's wrenching on, it starts to climb out of the jaws earlier. Instead of the points on the hex cramming into the jaws and slipping, some of this rotation is going to that hex climbing out of those jaws away from the throat despite the wrench moving in an automated perfect arc about the center. This resulted in 112.4, not a huge difference all said for how much different it looked, but larger a difference than we expected. From what we can tell, turning it this way at least requires some participating action, someone watching what's going on and adjusting how they're wrenching accordingly. To simulate a constant force down on the wrench to prevent it caming out, we're gonna put a smooth jaw clamp here that will resist but eventually push out of the way if forced to, and this is gonna get much closer to equal. And considering we didn't have a new third wrench here to put on, this was just used to crank on things, albeit not the hardest hex in the world, we'll call this 125.9 it's getting here, pretty bang on to about even with the first test. So we're gonna test the 19 millimeter end just to be sure, but first we wanted to give you a quick shot of a subject we thought might be a cool factoid for you, our snap-on wrenches getting worse, getting better. This is a classic 17 by 19 open end, nothing right out of the box, though not abused either. So the only thing we can really realistically be able to confirm is if this used wrench makes more, it's obviously better. In this case, it makes 131.4, which is pretty much bang on. That's impressive, I feel. So they're at least as good, or if nothing else, very consistent over the years. Good stuff. Okay, so you swinging a wrench, you're not a pair of locking pliers. You can't hold down a wrench as steadfast as one of those. The last thing we wanted to check over on the 90 millimeter end is if pushing down on those jaws, when it's beginning to load up and grip on that hex, does that help this so far at least somewhat less perfect approach we've been seeing? And that makes for 197.2 here with that wrench flipped over and some force applied down. And with the longer jaw further away from you now, we see 198.3 about back to even again, though slightly getting those bragging rights again. From what we can tell from our data is this, the long jaw away from you, force being applied away from it, stretching that long jaw out, seems to always have an advantage. Does that mean it's always going to be better? We don't think so unless you're pushy and can do a perfect swing every time. There's a reason wrenches have this offset angle based on the position of your arm or the position your body's in. The default way may be awkward and cause you to slip off that bolt head. So use what you feel is gonna do the best job. And let's be real, something probably is in the way like it always is. So you may have to start with the wrench in the direction it's gonna fit, that's just life. But we can at least with our data give two recommendations. One, if you're using a wrench this way and the bolt or nut is giving you grief, like gonna need a lot of torque, push down onto the fastener with a constant but not massive force while you crank on it. We find that will basically even the score from what any human could notice when it comes to the grip between the two options. And two, if you have the option of either way all the same, this orientation seems to, and this is our main discovery, so don't quote us like we said one is way better than the other, to prove all your friends wrong, this direction seems to reach the wrench's peak grip easier, which is to say without adding additional effort and concentration on your part when you're pulling on that wrench to meet its max ability. Unless it's an adjustable wrench, then go this way away from the fixed jaw whenever you can. I hope you learned something from today's testing. I know I did. We make episodes like this every Friday. Click some things to do things and thanks for watching.